I'm not a shy person. I'd love to be there in person to tell my story. But I can't. I have to protect my daughter. She is the most important thing to me. And, um, you see, we have a long way to go before she and I are safe from him. We met at a hospital. He was a medical student on a rotation. I was in finance. When our eyes met, there was an instant spark. He took me on three dates that first week, telling me how he couldn't get me out of his mind. He said he fell for me right away and knew he would one day ask me to marry him. <laughs> I felt like the luckiest girl in the room just to be with him. I was, uh, in his words, the best girl he'd ever met. Now I know that's one of the danger signs of an abuser. <laughs> I didn't know I was being abused. I didn't know I was a survivor. I just thought I was going crazy. I realized early on when he was angry, he had a, uh, a look. He never lost his temper in public, but his, his lips would tighten. He'd grow quiet and I'd grow nervous, start to shake. That meant I was in for it when we got in the car. I'd wonder what I had done, who I had looked at, whether I had talked to someone longer than I should. Maybe my bubbly personality had been too much. Slowly, I learned to be more subdued, be quieter in public, to behave as the perfect and flawless wife he demanded I be. In short, I learned to survive without knowing I was a survivor. Eventually, the control became worse. He loved me too much to spend time without me. He didn't understand why we needed to include other people in our lives, even if it was my best friend. Eventually, he forbade me from seeing my parents. I was put on an allowance and not allowed enough money to eat out with friends for lunch or control the grocery list, despite having an income of my own. What I remember most when I close my eyes is the bruises. I remember waking up solemnly after a particularly bad night, making his coffee, packing his lunch as I did every morning, as if nothing had happened. When he left for work, I stood in front of the bathroom mirror gazing at a woman I didn't recognize with two large bruises on either side of her neck. He had slapped me, grabbed my neck, and held me down on the couch for some infraction that was too insignificant to remember. I silently covered the bruises with expensive makeup as I stared back into a stranger's eyes. And I stayed. I told no one. By the time my daughter was born, I no longer recognized that woman in the mirror at all. I was so empty. A shell of who I'd been, of, of who I am now. The evidence is not the same as the memories. Beautiful wedding, pictures, family vacations, and happy photographs hid the truth in plain sight. I was living a lie, and only the woman in the mirror knew the real truth. If any of my friends, anyone I knew, came to me and told me they'd been hit, I would have one word for them. Run. 
I would tell them not to think twice about it. Run far and fast. Get out. And there I was. I had stayed. I had stayed silent. I didn't... I didn't know I was a survivor of domestic abuse. Now I know that I am a survivor. I've moved on and I found a better life. Those years with him have left scars that no one sees. And unlike bruises, scars don't heal overnight. I still carry the scar of shame at being an intelligent woman who should have known better. Would you judge me if you knew the abuse I experienced and that I stayed? Would you look at me differently than you do now? Here is what I want you to remember from my story. Those of us who look most like we don't need help are the ones who need it the most. Those who look like they could never abuse may well be the monster in their home. My ex-husband was voted most compassionate physician the same year I called the police when he beat me. The year he told me he would kill me. The year I finally woke up as a victim and left a survivor. Today, I'm unable to tell my story in public. I have a safety plan thanks to Harbor House, but that includes staying silent. But maybe, just maybe, my story will make sure that this does not happen to someone else. Harbor House empowers survivors, helps them create a safety plan, shelters them, and helps them rebuild their self-worth. If this can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. I ask you today for your friends, for your families, for those who you know and love, to look at that woman in the mirror. If you have forgotten who she is, make a call. Together, we can end domestic abuse.